Bitcoin has finally broken its all-time high. Altcoins are going bananas, meme coins are going nuts, and everyone's turning just a few dollars into multi-millions. You're here because you want to learn how to turn $1,000 into more than $1 million. And my friends, this video is going to teach you just that. Oh yes, we're here to make magic internet money appear in your account. We know you see it all across TikTok. Your boys are printing gains with the next hottest dog coin. The charts, they just cannot go down. The money, it's pretty much free. It's in your pocket. You don't have to do anything. It's just already in your pocket. If you watch this video, you're already a millionaire, pretty much. Well, obviously you can tell from my tone, I'm being a little sarcastic. You see, I've been in crypto now for three cycles and I actually know exactly what part of the movie we're at. Yes, this video is going to be dedicated to showing you how to make an insane amount of money in crypto, but it might not be exactly what you think it is. You see, I realized that if you're clicking on this video, you're probably either an OG Elio Trades fan, shout out to you, thank you, please like and subscribe. However, judging by the fact that my videos have been exploding with popularity, it just might happen that you might be new to cryptocurrency. Maybe it's been a few years since you've been here, maybe you've been seeing some viral stories of people making money on social media, or maybe you're fresh to the game, literally green behind the ears, and it's time for me to teach you how to really make money. No bullshit, no sugar coating. I know how to make money in this industry, and I'm going to tell you not only the path that you can actually make a lot of money here, but I'm going to give you the golden rules and most importantly, the things that you need to avoid doing if you have any chance of making money at all. So first, we're going to talk about exactly why this moment is crazy, why this moment is truly historic for Bitcoin and all of cryptocurrency and why everyone is so freaking bullish right now. But all that doesn't change the fact that you're starting with a small amount of money and want to make a very large amount of money. So this video is going to be designed to walk you through everything you need to know in order to stay alive, to swim in what is a very deep and dark swimming pool of cryptocurrency and hopefully help you make it out with some profits to spare. Now, I want to be very clear. No one can predict the future, not me. I can use probabilities and historical examples to give you my best ideas of what's going to happen next, but I can only give you my best guesses. And that doesn't mean that I'm going to be right, nor is anyone else on the internet. So the first step to actually making a gargantuan life-changing amount of money is to actually take full responsibility for every decision you make. This might seem a little bit weird to be like, oh, take responsibility. How does that make me make money? Well, I'll tell you this much. If you think that because you watched a YouTube video or because you saw a TikTok or whatever was the inspiration for you buying a cryptocurrency and you don't understand why you're buying it, whether it's overvalued or undervalued, whether the market's likely to go up or not, or have a target to sell it, you've effectively thrown yourself into the shark tank and you have no tools to navigate. The first step to actually growing into this industry is to accept the fact that if you put money on the line and you lose it, you are the one responsible, nobody else. I know it sounds weird, but owning that is really a first step to participating in crypto. Crypto is all about ownership, true ownership, true freedom with your money. But freedom comes with a responsibility. So please take ownership right here and right now before we cross this line or else you're going to get eaten alive in crypto. You might as well just throw your money into the well right now because you're not going to get ahead by pointing the finger and assigning blame to others for your own decisions. You need to understand the risks and the rewards of what you're doing. That, my friends, is golden rule number one. Golden rule number two, is understand cycles. You might see people talking about the Bitcoin halving. You might see people talking about the four-year cycle. You might see a lot of cryptocurrency OGs very sure about what's going to happen next, predicting moon boy math outcomes 100x, 1000x on coins. And that's because this stuff has happened not once, not twice, but three times before. There have been absolutely nuts Bitcoin and crypto bull markets. Just take a look here and you can see that there are all kinds of metrics and ways to evaluate when we're in a bull market. And yes, it's it's very obvious that we are entering into a bull market. The blue line that you're seeing is the halving, which is about to take place in April. And as you can see, after the halving, it's usually onward and upward for Bitcoin and crypto. But this particular bull market is special. It's special because for the first time ever, we actually have Bitcoin being publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange, being publicly traded as an ETF on the stock market. The generation with the most money in history can now easily, with one click, allocate their investments into Bitcoin. And you better believe that they're going to have a lot of reasons to. Because not only is Bitcoin the best performing asset class when you compare it to everything else besides crypto over the last year, and nothing is better marketing than big green candles, but you also have yet another round of instability in the banking system. And many people might be wondering, what would happen if a bank were to collapse? What would happen to Bitcoin? Is that good or bad? 
Well, we actually saw banks collapse in March of 2020, and this is exactly what happened. As you can see here, this is precisely when Silicon Valley Bank collapsed, and Bitcoin was actually coming down all the way from 25K all the way down to um, under 20K here. It was about 19K here for a few days. We learned here that the Fed was bailing out multiple banks, and Bitcoin goes almost on a nonstop tear all the way up to 30,000, from under 20,000. Now, precisely when that happened, I switched bullish and went from talking about really doom and gloom scenarios to I said new bull market confirmed for Bitcoin and crypto. You can see it right here. Now, as you can see, I made a video on this day on March 12th saying biggest bailout since 2008, the moment Bitcoin was created for. And this video was over the weekend that Bitcoin was still under 20K. And essentially, this was my moment that I pivoted and said, you know what? This is a huge change. This is what Bitcoin was really designed to protect against, which was actually encoded as a message by Satoshi into the original Genesis block of Bitcoin, which referred to the bank bailouts of 2008. Effectively, Bitcoin was created precisely to fight against the inflation caused by bank bailouts. So we know that banking instability is one of the biggest bull cases. In fact, the thing that Bitcoin was created to fight against. We also know that since it's been listed on the stock market, it's been going absolutely bananas. But you might not be aware that there's actually a bank on the verge of needing a bailout right now, New York Community Bank, NYCB. Now, they did get a temporary infusion of cash here from Steve Mnuchin, but we don't know if it's enough to fully stabilize the situation. In fact, the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve has just issued a new memo effectively asking for changes that would make it so that banks do not have to declare their U.S. government debt on their balance sheets. I'm going to dumb this down because that's not the point of this episode, but effectively they're doing everything they can right now to make sure that the banks don't need to get bailed out because right now banks are in serious trouble with the amount of government debt that they have on their balance sheets. In fact, the only way to fix this is to cut rates, but Jerome Powell is worried that if he cuts rates, markets are just going to get way too hot and inflation is going to come back. So they're trying to play this game of chicken where they keep rates high, but in the process, they're literally breaking the banking system. And if something breaks, they literally only have one way to fix it. And that, my friends, is the magic button that fixes everything. That's right. It's the money printer. But now when they print money, it's directly reflected in the price of Bitcoin. And that's not all. We're seeing President Biden literally today talking about another annual tax credit that would allow for $400 a month for Americans to pay for their mortgages because he knows that housing is unaffordable. These are all just different words for putting more money into the economy to make things look and feel better. But that's precisely the thing that got us into this situation in the first place. And while America might be doing a delicate dance here, China is not. They're about to unveil even more stimulus after trillions of dollars have been unveiled this year. Remember, Bitcoin is a global asset class. When more money is introduced into the global economy from any single government, it is reflected in the price of Bitcoin. So you get it now that Bitcoin Bitcoin is about to break its prior all-time high of 69,000. And it's not really a question of if, because it's got literally every possible perfect storm scenario behind it right now. And meanwhile, the new ETFs on Wall Street have gobbled up now $50 billion in assets, about $8 billion of which is new net inflows in just seven weeks, which is not only record-breaking, it's mind-blowing. So much so that the biggest company on earth, BlackRock, is now filing to include the Bitcoin spot ETF in all kinds of different funds, like its global allocation fund. This is just the beginning of a much larger trend. Wall Street is addicted to Bitcoin. The best marketing is number go up, and that number is actually set to explode right now. As my good Bitcoin Bitcoiner friend Dylan LeClaire says, a wall of money is coming. And so what happens after Bitcoin breaks its all-time high? I'm going to show you this clip from Anthony Pompliano on CNBC, where he explains what's happened the last few times Bitcoin broke its all-time high. Listen to this. But also, as we near this record high, if we go back and we look at past record high breaks, or if we eclipse the old all-time high, three of the four times Bitcoin doubled in 18 days or less. And so if you think about that for a second, once you break through an all-time high, it's price discovery. What, what is this thing worth? The world is going to try to figure that out. And three of the last four times, in 18 days or less, it doubled in price. So here we are at the verge of breaking the all-time high. And 75% of the time, three out of the four last times it did this, it doubled within 18 days. So suffice it to say, things are not only good looking, things are not just bullish. It feels in a way with the new Bitcoin ETFs on the stock market, combined with the instability in the banks, combined with the fact that the Fed literally has a gun to their head right now playing chicken with the banks and they have to in some way 
loosen conditions or will be forced to bail banks out, all of which will be like literally pouring gasoline on one of the most bullish situations for Bitcoin that we've ever seen. So is the moment historic? Yes, absolutely. This could be one of the craziest bull markets we'll ever see in our lifetimes. And to make things even crazier, Ethereum is on track to get its own ETF and the final decision date is in May. Now, the legal logic that was used to sue the SEC and force a Bitcoin ETF, well, that's also present for Ethereum too. And BlackRock has already filed for a spot Ethereum ETF. So if you ask me, we're going to be getting an ETH ETF in May as well. And the price has been reflecting that. So I know what you're thinking right now. This is great. Shuck money at the market. Cannot lose. Up only. We're all going to be rich. And that might be true. But now let's get down to the realities, which is that if you're new to crypto and you haven't been here for a while, you need to hear these harsh truths and you need to learn these golden rules. Because while everything I said to you leading up to this point should have gotten you pretty excited about why the next few months and maybe even years in crypto land might be like a storybook of gains and free money getting printed every day from your Wi-Fi router. The truth is that most people in crypto lose money. I'm going to repeat that again. Most people lose money, especially if they're new to crypto. And one of the things that I didn't realize last cycle that I know now is that right as we switch over from Bitcoin all-time high, the flood of new people coming into this industry hits a fever pitch. So I'm changing my content a little bit, which is normally aimed at a more sophisticated, very much so higher skill level type of player in crypto. I'm trying to make sure that the newbies here in the audience don't get eaten alive in what is the most amazing, but also the most cutthroat capitalist market on earth. That's right. This is raw, unadulterated free markets. And it's so easy to get your arm chewed off in the wood chipper. It'll happen faster than you think. So understand, while the opportunity is there, the risk is insanely large. Literally every coin could go down up to 80% or more in this market. Even Bitcoin could plummet. There is no free lunch. There is no guarantees. You need to take responsibility as we cross into this next section. But without further ado, let's get to the golden rules and ways that I personally would turn thousands dollars into a million dollars if I was starting in crypto today. First and foremost, you need a hardware wallet. That's right, using a hardware wallet is probably the most important, easy first step. Now, I personally use a ledger. You can look up how to use a ledger. There's also Trezor, which is spelled Trezor. You can say how to use a Trezor. Just search on Google. I'm not going to do this whole how to use a hardware wallet thing. There's tons of tutorials out there. Go watch a how to use a hardware wallet tutorial and use one. Number four, don't keep money on centralized exchanges. This one will hit hard for anyone who left money on FTX, Celsius. You've heard the stories of collapses in the crypto space where people lose all their money. It's really easy. Once you get money into crypto, whether it's Coinbase, where you can actually get up to $200 for signing up with my link and joining Coinbase using the link below, check it out. It's awesome. They're the gold standard of cryptocurrency exchanges. They've never been hacked and they've never lost money. But still, even after you get money onto Coinbase, Binance, Kraken, wherever you get your money into crypto, you need to buy crypto and then take it off the exchange and put it on your hardware wallet. That is the simplest way to avoid the vast majority of problems that people run into in this industry. It's easy to do as well, okay? So look up how to use a hardware wallet, buy your crypto, and send it to your hardware wallet. Get it off the exchange. Next, you'll see a lot of cryptocurrency YouTubers advertising this particular website. It's called Bybit. There are many similar websites like Bybit, like others, that allow for you to do what's called leverage trading. It means that you can bet on the direction of Bitcoin or crypto and you can use 100x leverage or 10x leverage. Effectively, you can magnify the value of your trades, but that also magnifies the value of your losses, which means if you take a 10x leverage position and the price drops on you 10%, you're left with nothing. If you do 100% leverage, leverage and the price moves the other way 1%, you're left with nothing. This is effectively turning crypto into one big casino. It is very degenerate and most people that use leverage end up losing everything. So unless you're a pro, a real experienced pro with years and years of trading experience, you should honestly never be touching leverage, especially if you only have a small amount of money in the bank. Do not come close to this stuff. This is not a knock on Bybit or any of these exchanges. I'm not saying that they're not reputable. I'm saying that this style of trading is far too risky. Do not touch it. All right, those were like the safety tips. Now let's get into how to make money, okay? First, you need to understand where you are in the cycle. One of the reasons why I've been able to absolutely crush this bull market so far is that I flipped bullish very early in the cycle. I recognized the change from bear market to bull market, and I bought heavily around 19 to $30,000. And I started buying into altcoins aggressively in 2023 before they took off. One of the things you absolutely have to understand if you're trading crypto is that everything moves together. When Bitcoin is moving up, all 
altcoins will move up. However, when Bitcoin finally reaches its ultimate all-time high and starts crashing, what you'll see is altcoins will usually have about a three-week party and then everything will continue to fall for not just weeks, not just months, but over a year. This is what we call the bear market. And what you want to be able to do is understand once Bitcoin has really finished its run, you want to sell stuff. In order to do that, you need to understand the cycle itself. Now, lucky for you, I actually made a video on exactly this topic just a few days ago. It really triggered some people. I found that pretty funny. I think they just saw the thumbnail and got all triggered. Oh, he's selling everything. I never said I was selling everything right now, but I did intentionally want to catch people's attention because as we're approaching this new parabolic upside, I wanted to be clear. It looks like everything is going to go crazy. Everything is going to go nuts into the upside. So buying stuff that goes up will be something that almost everyone can do if you buy at the right time in the cycle. But it's important that you understand when to sell or else you won't walk away from the table with any chips at all. And that, of course, is the goal. So watch this video when you get a chance after this one, and it'll help you understand and chart a path to selling. A good rule of thumb is that you should never buy anything in crypto before you have a target for where you want to sell it. Buying without a framework for when you want to sell is effectively like jumping in the piranha tank covered in honey with no flippers on and blindfolded. I don't know if piranhas eat honey, but you get me. Now, mainstream media is making it seem like we are actually about to have some big crash and recession. But really, according to what's called the 18.5 year real estate cycle, which I actually got this from Jason Pizzino, a really cool YouTuber. Make sure you check him out. He talks a lot about this. He says we are actually here and that the housing cycle, which has a lot more data than crypto, is due for a correction in 2026. We also have a note from Ray Dalio just the other day saying that he doesn't believe that the stock market is looking like it's in a bubble, that it's only in the 52nd percentile and that it doesn't reflect what he considers bubble territory. Usually, if the stock market is on the up and up, that crypto will also be on the up and up. In fact, the stock market recently made new highs and usually Bitcoin and crypto will make new highs within a few months of the stock market doing that. So everything is lining up for Bitcoin to have a new high and us to kick off another very healthy bull run. So check out that video I made on selling, but also know that a lot of the targets that people are looking for to actually pick a selling target. Once those become widely known, they are no longer usually that accurate. There's a saying that when a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. And this effectively says that, you know, Coinbase app ranking, which we talk about, usually when Coinbase is the number one app in the app store, that means that the cycle is over. The problem here is that it doesn't factor in the reason for this run. And as MetaQuant says here, we're moving towards the right curve of adoption rate. And now retail knows about crypto. And he says, don't mix signs of adoption with top signals. Don't let PTSD ruin your fun. So again, the video I made is not a perfect guide. It's just stuff that you should be aware of that triggered the top in prior cycles, but it might not mean it's the top this cycle. Picking tops is really hard business, but it's important that you realize that this cycle is rather different in the reason why Bitcoin's going up. BlackRock and their buddies are buying the heck out of this. Wall Street is buying this. Institutions are buying this. And the thought is that this probably will lead to sovereign wealth funds buying Bitcoin as well. And this means people like Saudi Arabia, Abu Dhabi, China, etc. This is a different customer a different buyer that has pushed Bitcoin up in the past. So the cycle will literally mimic when those buyers are actually willing to sell and take profits, which might not be for a very long time. Again, I'm not trying to make you sell immediately. I'm just trying to give you a realistic outcome of how you can actually walk away from the table with chips. And just so you know, we're about to get to all the strategies right now. So you get it. You want to use a hardware wallet, take responsibility, understand why Bitcoin's so bullish, understand where you are in the cycle, because understanding where you are in the cycle will allow you to understand, most critically, when it's a good time to buy and when it's a good time to start selling. Now, one of the golden rules that I didn't touch on yet is that in crypto, you always want to mask your IP address. This might come across as a little bit strange, but understand that once you're actually holding, owning truly in a free and decentralized way your own assets, assets that are incredibly powerful and can be transmitted Admitted to others anywhere in the world, totally decentralized and irreversibly. Well, you've also entered into a world where you are now, unfortunately, a target. That's right. You want to do everything you can if you're at the start of your journey to protect yourself online. And that means always, always using a VPN. You see, while crypto is decentralized, the websites that you visit, like CoinMarketCap, CoinGecko, the DeFi sites, all the crypto products you might visit, those are not decentralized. And if you're not using a VPN, you're pretty much waving around your ID in public saying, hey, look, here's me, I'm a crypto user. You don't want to do that. And actually preventing people from knowing who you are online is super easy. And I use a product called NordVPN. It's the sponsor of today's video. Shout out to them. I've actually been using NordVPN for a very long time, and it is the best VPN 
VPN that you can use. You can get a massive discount for using the code in the description below. If you're new to the channel, you might not know this, but I was actually SIM swapped last year and it all came from data leakage that could have been largely prevented had I used NordVPN with threat protection. So do yourself a favor, save yourself the pain, get a VPN. It literally costs a few dollars per month. It's almost free. And I've said many times before, I'll say it again. There are many mistakes that you will be forgiven for in cryptocurrency, but not using a VPN is not one of them. So get it, get it on a discount. If you use my link, it supports the channel and I appreciate it. And now let's get back to making alchemy here with magic internet money. Now you're here, you're ready. You're at the base of the mountain and you know enough that I can start talking to you about good old cryptocurrency coins, the type of coins that are gonna make you crazy life-changing games, the type of coins that you're gonna start screenshotting and sharing in your dirty little chats tonight. Look how much money I made. I know what you want, and believe me, we all want the same thing. So let's get down to business. Many of you might know what this is, but some of you might actually not. This is CoinMarketCap. There's another one called CoinGecko. Essentially, these sites track all the tokens in the market. Here's how you can read this site really quickly. For every asset, it's listed in order of how big the coin is, and that is determined by this right here, the market cap. The price of the token is on the left here. That doesn't really matter that much. What matters is the actual market cap, is you take the amount of tokens here, the circulating supply, and you multiply them by the price. So check it out. This whole list is actually sorted in order of size. But what you'll notice is that, for example, a coin like Shiba Inu might actually have a very small token value. It's worth just a fraction of a fraction of a penny. However, it's even bigger than Avalanche, which is $42. And that's because these unit values don't really mean anything. You can think of it like a pizza. You can slice a pizza into a million slices, or you can slice a pizza into two slices. It doesn't make the pizza bigger or smaller. So Shiba Inu has really, really small slices, whereas Avalanche has bigger slices. And you can tell this by the circulating supply. You can see Shiba Inu has, you know, trillions of coins here, 589 trillion, whereas Avalanche has 377 million. So it's actually over a thousand times more tokens in Shiba Inu than Avalanche. And that's why the token prices are so different. So token prices matter because that has to go up for you to make money. But the size of the market is what you want to pay attention to. The smaller the market cap, the bigger the chances that it's going to go up a lot. The bigger the coin, the bigger the market cap, the higher chance that it is a safer play. People call this big caps, as in big market caps, or small caps, or micro caps. This all refers to the size of the coin. If you don't understand the market cap you're getting into, again, you're flying completely blind. That is how everyone invests. You only care about market cap. I don't care about how many coins are in the ecosystem. I care about how big the ecosystem is and what the total value of that ecosystem is. Now, the next thing you need to learn about is something called fully diluted market cap, okay? This is huge. If you don't understand this, you're gonna eat in the live, especially with new tokens. Now, as you can see here, this project is called Akash Network. Now, I am an investor in Akash. I'll always tell you guys if I hold any tokens, so you know if I'm incentivized or have any bias in the market, okay? I make very thorough, transparent explanations when I hold coins, and I think it's really important that you know that. However, as you can see here, the market cap for Akash is 1.3 billion. The fully diluted market cap is 2.24 billion, right? Which means here that you have about two thirds of the coin circulating. You can see there's 229 million Akash out there, AKT, and the total that they can have is 388 million AKT. So this is the new supply that can hit the market. Now, when you're buying a token, you wanna look at this fully diluted market cap. This number tells you really what the value of the ecosystem is. Because sometimes you can keep this number very very low, but if this number is very high, effectively the tokens you're buying might be very expensive. You always want to buy tokens that go up in value. So you want to buy tokens that are not very expensive. Now, don't get me wrong. Bull markets are crazy. Tokens can pump under all circumstances, but I'm trying to give you the tools to survive here. Fully diluted market caps express what the value of an ecosystem truly is. And new tokens will often launch with a very small amount of their supply circulating. And this brings us a little ahead, but we'll jump ahead here, which is the golden rule number nine is to avoid token launches. Now, the reason for this is that when new tokens launch on the market, they do a bunch of marketing. It'll launch with a big exchange, a big boom, but usually there's only a small amount of tokens, maybe five, 10% of the total tokens are on the market and they save the other tokens for investors that are locked up for staking rewards, whatever it might be. Just know if you're buying, you could be buying an extremely expensive token, but it has a super high price right now because there's just not that many of them. And as that inflation comes in, it has potential to kill your gains. So understand fully diluted valuations and learn to compare them within categories. And that brings us to the next golden rule. 
always bet on category leaders. All right, so now we get to the fun part here because I'm going to be going through coins that I've talked about in the past, right? This is not new to my channel, but it's probably new to you. And I'm going to explain to you why I think that this is the right mentality and framework for people who are new to crypto. And then I'm going to tell you something that's going to be pretty shocking right after this. So make sure you do not get carried away and just start buying stuff while I'm in the middle of this video. There is a lot of knowledge to cover here. You need to stay strapped into your chair. You need to reach for the mouse. You need to smash the like button because what is this? This is already a 39 minute file. I'm sure this video is going to end up being like almost an hour long. Okay. I'm sweating here. Smash the like button for this fitzy action here. Okay. Smash it. So now it's time to talk about what a portfolio should look like in my mind. I put out this video at some point in Q3 of 2023. And effectively, I was talking about how I was dividing up money between treasuries and crypto. This number doesn't make any sense anymore because my crypto is up like between 10 and 20 X since that date. So just remember, as we're talking about understanding cycles, I'm up already 10 to 20 X. A lot of people are. So while you're not late, meaning you're not coming way after the Bitcoin all-time high, you're not the latest of the late, you are not early. And that means that there is more risk to you than there was when I was buying at those lows. Even though it felt weird, now things are way up, which means that there's more risk. The higher we go, there's more risk. So understand, higher we go, more risk, even though it feels better to buy. So ignore this distribution here because, you know, probably if you're clicking on this video, $1,000 to a $1 million, yeah, you're not going to be dividing 50-50 uh, cash in crypto. You're probably going to hope that you just make it in crypto. I get that. I get that. Financial nihilism, but I get it. So my crypto barbell, this is where I really want you guys to get this. I'm going to tell you a bunch of gems here, and then I'm going to tell you the actual secret, the actual secret sauce that I would hope you do after I show you how this works. But the crypto barbell for me is a 60-40, where you have 60% of your tokens in what I call high conviction coins. These coins are the Bitcoins, the Ethereums. As you can see, I have Solana in here, and I have Coinbase stock in here. Yeah, Coinbase, I know it's a stock, but it trades like an absolute shit coin. So just understand, this is my four horse of this crypto bull run. And it's been an amazing, amazing selection. But just know, 60% of my money, I try to keep it in here, okay? 40%, I put in what I call zero or infinity. And the reason why I have the zero infinity bucket is because I pretty much jump all the way out on the spectrum and I say, hey, look, you can think of it as Valhalla or Hades. You make it or you break it. But the thing is, when you actually make it in crypto, if something goes 10x, 20x, whatever, it can really offset a lot of losses. And that's been my experience that if you learn to play the game and you get in early in the cycle, your wins will dramatically offset the losses that you inevitably will take. And trust me, you will take losses. Everybody does. A lot of them. If you think you're not going to take losses, just Turn this video off right now and please leave. Do not buy crypto. Go do something else with your life because you're being legitimately delusional. So my high conviction bucket, you can see here, this is my breakdown on my high conviction bucket. It's definitely moved a lot around a lot of bit because Solana is up like 13x from where we bought it. Coinbase stock is up, you know, 3x or so. I have this stuff on the next page. But the point is I actually have a strategy to rotate my profits into Solana. And my target for Solana is between 500 and 1,000. My real genuine feeling is I think it might hit 800. Don't take that to the bank. They won't accept that, like I said. But that's my genuine intuition is that Solana will keep cooking all the way up through this cycle. And then I think it has the most upside of a safer bet that I think is most likely to benefit from this cycle. So far, I've been astronomically right about that. A lot of people gave me flack for having Solana in this bucket, but I stuck to my guns and I'm very happy I did. So my plan is that as I have other things from my zero infinity bucket that actually go up, 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 I'll sell them and roll them into Solana. And once I decided, you know what, I'm actually done with the cycle, I'll sell my Solana into stable coins. We'll talk about that at the end. Golden rule number seven, bet on category leaders. Now, if you are new to crypto and you're trying to turn a thousand dollars into a million dollars, you probably have no idea what category leaders are. There are actually a lot of categories of crypto coins. The two categories that I'm focused on, and I'm just going to save you all the pain, are gaming and AI. And the reason for this is simple. When you understand crypto more deeply, and I've made a lot of videos on this, you understand that the best tech isn't necessarily the thing that goes up in value. The things that go up in value have the most attention, the most people getting excited about them, pushing them. And the two categories that I see attracting the most attention throughout the next 12 to 18 months are gaming and AI. And the reason is that there are tons of new AAA gaming projects hitting the market within the next few months. In my opinion, the chance of some game actually crossing over into the mainstream and and having tens of millions or hundreds of millions of players coming into crypto all at once in the form of gaming is higher than any other 
product has a chance of going mainstream. This is where crypto will get its first use case with online gaming, trading assets and skins and using in-game currency that is actually crypto. If you're new to the channel, I've been talking about this a long time. I've been talking about this since 2018. I'm kind of known as the gaming guy and I actually have multiple projects in the gaming space. Almost all my eggs are in the gaming basket. So just understand that's my perspective. That's where I come at things from. I'm also an investor in most of the games in the space. I am heavily, heavily committed to this. So understand that I am extremely biased towards gaming, but I also have a lot of reasons and there's a lot of logic here. And by the way, gaming has been one of the darlings of this bull run has performed incredibly well. The other category that I'm very obsessed with is artificial intelligence. And that's because artificial intelligence continues to make world changing, earth shifting news from chat GPT to Sora to the open AI saga. Pretty much AI is guaranteed to have some massive, really significant business news or events happen or innovations happen within any given period of time. So remember, the golden rule with crypto is we're trying to figure out where the attention is. You can think of it like you're in a theme park and there's a bunch of roller coasters and rides that you could ride and say it's two o'clock. Your goal is to figure out not what is the most popular ride right now, but what is going to be the most popular ride at 2.30. You want to know where are the next group of people going to go? And with gaming, there are so many new gaming products hitting the market that I am very sure that there will be more and more people pushing into those roller coasters, into those coins. And with AI, I'm very, very confident that there will be big news stories, big happenings, big events in AI. And so I'm pretty sure AI will continue to remain hot. So that's my logic for why I believe gaming and AI are the place to play. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to catch the biggest winners. Like, obviously, there's going to be all kinds of winners that may be bigger than any individual gaming or AI token. But on the whole, I'm happy if I get into coins and make multiples of my money. That's the goal. We're here to make money. So gaming and AI are where I've stacked a lot of my bets. Now, the golden rule was bet on category leaders, but that would be very hard for you to do having very little information on crypto. So I've made you guys a little cheat sheet here. I've actually been keeping an updated list of this for a while, right? And as you can see here, I have my base portfolio, my safe portfolio on the left. These are all, you know, where I'm rotating profits. I'm pretty much stacking these forever. They're blue chips chips and uh, their category leaders as well. So easy to bet on these. In gaming, the category leaders, in my opinion, are Beam, Immutable X, Ronin, and there are two projects down here that I'm actually the co-founder of, but I believe that they're category leaders in their categories, which Neo Tokyo is like a crypto gaming club, effectively an exclusive club where all the gaming founders and investors have all congregated. Pretty much everyone who started a game, who runs a game studio or is a big game VC is in Neo Tokyo. And Superverse is a universal gaming coin, which is being integrated into every major game in the ecosystem. They are by far the gold standard and category leaders in what they do. Mutable X is like a publisher of Web3, where they have all these games launching on top of their blockchain and using their Immutable X software. Nobody has as many games as Immutable X, and that's why they are currently the biggest gaming token. Is effectively the market is valuing them so highly because the odds are that one of those games is going to be wildly successful. And if that's the case, then that bodes extremely well for Immutable X. Same with Beam. Beam has a ton of infrastructure, has a ton of games building on its technology, and is an extremely well diversified bet on crypto gaming. It is a category leader in its model. And I also put Ronin in here. What Ronin Chain was known for, as you might have heard of Axie Infinity, they effectively are the kings of play to earn of GameFi. And they recently had a game called Pixels Online launch on them. And in my opinion, they are still leading the way in that type of gaming. So in very different ways, these are all the category leaders for gaming. I want to be clear that category leaders are, in my opinion, not fact, but my opinion, the best projects in this space. But it doesn't mean that they're guaranteed to make money. And you certainly don't have any easy way of gauging how much money they'll make. Let me show you some examples of the variation in category leaders that you can see. Watch this. In the last bull run, Bitcoin hit its new high in December of 2020. Here you can see in December of 2020, Chainlink is a category leader. It's Chainlink over here. It's a category leader in what we call decentralized oracles. You don't need to know what that is. But look, right as Bitcoin was hitting its all time high, it was around 11 bucks. It ended up peaking right here at about 50 bucks. That's a 5x after all time highs from Bitcoin, right? So assuming we're at all time highs, this is the similar moment in history right now. So a category leader like a chain link might go 5x over, you know, over the course of the next few months. But then there's a coin called Polygon, which used to be called Matic. Now, actually, this coin was cranking all throughout the bear market, all throughout the bear market. It was putting out nonstop news. And when Bitcoin finally finally hit its all-time high in December of 2020, it was trading 
a little below two cents. Just call it two cents for easy math. By the time Bitcoin hit its all-time high and it started going, it made its way up to $2.45. In fact, it ended up peaking at almost three bucks. So literally 144X. And that all happened after Bitcoin's all-time high. Again, Polygon had a much smaller market cap, but they were both category leaders. So I can't just tell you, hey, look, here's how much a category leader is gonna pump after Bitcoin all-time high. It could be anywhere between a few hundred X and a couple X. There is no guarantee of how much things are gonna return here. Again, no one can tell you for sure what's gonna happen. But I can tell you that it is more likely that when you bet on category leaders, you will not only make money, but eventually those projects will have a future. So say you buy at the total wrong time, even if the project totally crashes, chances are whenever crypto comes back to life again, those category leaders will spring back to life with a fervor. That is why category leaders not only end up going higher than your worst nightmare, but they're the best bets long term because they don't lose as much value long term. Now, I will get back into the coins, but I want to tell you right now what the true strategy is because I've given you a lot of tools to analyze the market to understand why Bitcoin's bullish, to understand the trajectory of this crypto cycle, to understand the golden rules of how to not get screwed over, to not leave your coins on exchanges, how to read market caps and how to digest information. But there's one thing that you really should be doing. If I'm gonna be completely 100% real with you, if I was trying to turn $1,000 into a million dollars and taking this video at face value, because this ain't clickbait, this is actually real. If I was gonna take $1,000 and turn it into a million dollars, then I would be doing absolutely nothing nothing but farming airdrops. So most of you might know, okay, airdrops, cool. But for those of you who don't, airdrops are this thing that only exists in crypto where new coins can come to the market. Maybe they have a product in the market people are using and they know they want to launch a coin, but they don't want to sell it. So in order to build a community and gather a bunch of hype, they do what's called an airdrop. And most projects are pretty obvious when they're going to have airdrops. Even better, there is a new trend where airdrops, the projects are rewarding labor and loyalty, not just capital. You see, it used to be that if you wanted to get an airdrop, you just put a bunch of money in that protocol and let it sit there. Well, projects started to realize that doesn't help them build a real community. So what they started valuing was sweat equity, actually time and grinding. And if you're starting with a thousand bucks, you better at least do this. Do not be a lazy piece of shit. If you think that you're going to turn a thousand bucks into a million bucks and you're going to do it by being lazy, then you, my friends, are in for a world of hurt. At least put in the work here because to actually farm these airdrops is really hard work and to farm them with a small amount of money is astronomically harder. But I can tell you for a fact that it will bear fruit. This is my buddy Alex, who I actually had an interview with, and this guy made over a million dollars from the Jupiter airdrop. He's 17. Yes, no, he is like a kid here, and he has farmed so many airdrops, and he shared with me all of the alpha here. But go ahead and follow him yourself, not Xavier J. Check him out right here. Go follow him on Twitter. In fact, there are a lot of people like Miles Deutscher, like Virtual Bacon, who make all kinds of awesome airdrop content. There are airdrops hitting this market multiple times every month, sometimes over 10 a month. And what they reward is active users. If you deposit money to these protocols, to these projects, you trade around a little bit, you move funds around, you're active each and every day on their protocol, they will probably give you an airdrop. And usually airdrops could be valued in the thousands to the tens of thousands. There are airdrops where people staked one Solana and were actually airdropped over $10,000. If I was trying to turn $1,000 into a million dollars, I would grind airdrops like there's no tomorrow. And then I'd go look at category leaders in gaming AI and I'd shovel my profits into those or just straight up into Ethereum and Solana. I'd take my airdrop profits and I'd chuck them into things that are going to grind up and multiply with the market. Because it's not unreasonable that someone could actually farm six figures of airdrops. In fact, it's completely reasonable. And that's the craziest part is that if you put in the work here, you'll actually be able to make it out with not just thousands, but probably over a hundred thousand dollars over the next 18 months in airdrops. But it's going to take you grinding your ass off. And then once you understand that you could make it to 100K with hard work, then compounding it to make another five or 10X, that is something that is reasonable. Chucking your thousand dollars into a coin and hoping at thousand Xs is something that only a total dumbass would do. And who knows, it might work, but that's not skill. That's not something that's teachable. What is teachable is farming airdrops and then compounding them with all of the tools I gave you in this video. You see, all of the tools that I gave you work really well for actually navigating and allocating capital. But if you don't really have much capital to start with, then the 
the capital you should be using is your own sweat, your own hard work and effort. Now, like I said, I've given you a ton of resources to learn how to farm these airdrops. But if you're new to crypto, understand it will be a bit painful because farming airdrops means you'll probably have to deposit coins to all kinds of different blockchains. You'll have to learn how to use bridges. You'll have to learn all kinds of wallet security. You'll have to learn how to do more complex things like take loans, like build collateral. All of these things might seem hard at first, but there is really no substitute for just learning by doing. It's like riding a bike. Just get on the damn bike. But again, if you're unwilling to put in the work, then trust me, I don't feel bad for you. Farming airdrops oftentimes requires very little risk to your capital and has the potential, especially for starting with a small amount of money, to make a really significant multiple on that money. I'm talking thousands and thousands of dollars here each and every airdrop. So to recap, golden rule number eight is to farm, farm, and farm some more. And of course, once you get those bags, once you farm yourself into having a decent amount of liquidity, in my opinion, you'll want to understand you're in this theme park. There's news happening every day. There's the Bitcoin spot ETF. There's sovereign wealth funds coming in. This theme park is getting more and more bustling the more the cycle goes on. And the game is to take the capital that you acquired through farming airdrops and chuck it into things that will compound. Again, I'm not going to tell you not to buy utter crap at the bottom of coin market cap, but I will tell you that it sometimes boggles the mind how high category leaders can continue to grow. You want to identify the categories that you think will attract new people. You think of those rides. Okay, maybe you don't agree with my thesis about gaming. Maybe you do agree with AI or vice versa. Whatever thesis makes sense to you, obviously it's easier to stick by a thesis that makes sense to you. Go with that. Find the category leaders that you think make sense within those categories and rotate your bags into them so you can compound with the cycle. Again, remember, Bitcoin goes through horrific bear markets insane rises and then horrific drops. What you want to do is get as many coins out before the drop as you can. And so you need to understand and start to learn how to spot that Bitcoin top. The video popping up after this is all about selling. I highly encourage that you watch it. Finally, some updates on my project. Obviously, if you're new here, this is a project that I co-founded. It's called Superverse. I mentioned it a little bit earlier in the video. The mission of Superverse is to unite the entire gaming space with a single token. You see, what we are a part of here is the biggest crypto gaming community, the most powerful network in the crypto gaming space. And for that reason, the most elite games in the space want to come and plug into this network. And they're doing so with the super token. You see, having tokens associated with just one game is extremely risky because the game might not ultimately be successful. So one of the ways that I find is best to navigate my favorite niche, which is crypto gaming, is to focus on tokens that are not just in one game, but are connected to many games. And in fact, the network around Superverse is growing incredibly strong. This week, we announced that Metalcore, a new AAA game that's like a mech shooter, is coming into the ecosystem. This is from an absolutely legendary team that's worked on titles such as Fortnite and Star Wars. These are absolute killers. And this is yet another monster addition to the Superverse ecosystem. And I want to remind you that the Off the Grid event is still live, where if you're a super holder, you can claim exclusive loot in this game and battle for validator NFTs, which are functional parts of the blockchain behind Off the Grid, one of the most hyped crypto games in the history of this industry. And you can see footage here of Dr. Disrespect, one of the biggest gaming streamers in the world, playing it, talking about how it has the best graphics that he's ever seen in a battle royale. Definitely follow Superverse Twitter, make sure you have the bell notification on because the updates are coming fast and furious. And I want you guys to make sure that you're following the story. So I'll be mentioning Super News each and every video here on the channel, helping you guys stay up to date with a project that has taken about six years of my life to get to this point. And believe me, I'm extremely proud of the way it's going. Well, there you have it, a complete Bible. If you know nothing about crypto, if you know a lot about crypto, it should be helpful for you. It's something for all skill levels. Again, watch this video on selling. If you buy something without knowing when you're gonna sell it, you're like a little minnow swimming along, waiting for a shark to just gobble you up. I hope this video helps you, I really do. If it does, smash that like button, leave me a comment, I'll see you very soon on the next episode.